before we get into some of the nitty gritty of, right, of sort of you bread and butter day to day, I, I'm trying to get my head around how the coronavirus is coming onto your shores and might be causing disruption in terms of how you look at the world for the remainder of 2020. Well, I think really the coronavirus is a story for us that impacts uh, our people. Um, certainly investors around the world are clearly uh, watching and waiting and seeing how that develops and are uh, pretty much um, figuring out how to react. You see the markets are reacting as they do. Uh, I think people are, are really monitoring the situation. But for us, it's a story about our people. We have about 200 people in uh, Hong Kong and Taiwan and mainland China. So we're really monitoring the situation, making sure that they've got the right kind of support. Um, we're a global index provider, so we have operations across the globe. And what we're doing is thinking about the contingencies that we might need to put into play to be able to share the load between our operations over in Hong Kong, Taipei, and China across other uh, other offices around the world, but really very much thinking about our staff and our people uh, out, in, uh, out in Asia, monitoring the situation and giving them the support that they need. Well, Kaz, how is the effort going in terms of trying to find new products to try and boost liquidity? Because you look at some of the Middle East indexes, and FTSE Russell will know this well, uh, it's, it's pretty dry, to, to say the least. What, what, what's, what's in the pipeline in terms of innovation? Try and get that up a little bit. Well, today we're announcing a partnership with ADX, actually. So this is uh, pretty exciting for us because we are going to get into a partnership with ADX where we take over the operation of the ADX index and all the sector indices. So we'll take over the daily calculation. We'll bring to bear all of our global expertise in indexing our operations, our scale, our governance and our methodology processes. Um, and that's something that for us represents continued investment in the Middle East. Uh, we're seeing that as a first step here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we're very excited about being here for the long term. Uh, a first step because we continue to think about how we can develop new products. So we intend to do Sharia compliant indices. We intend to do sustainability, uh, sustainable index products because that's clearly the main trend across the world that, uh, that global investors mm -hmm. are uh, really interested in and, and asking us as index providers to provide solutions yeah. for. So, you know, there's plenty of work to do here, I think, in, uh, in the Middle East. The right. markets are, uh, are such that, you know, we can bring more index products to the market here. Well, Kaus, what about derivatives? I mean, the people I've been speaking to keep saying, yeah, sure, they're there, but it would be better to have more. We would like to see more index derivatives, index futures, index options. Uh, that would enable the, uh, the hedging and the liquidity to come into other index products like ETFs. I think what we need to have is uh, the involvement of global index providers in the region to be able to spur the market, to be able to attract both foreign investors to look at the index product development here in the market, but also the local investors uh, and local uh, market actors and market participants uh, to be able to think about the development of further index products here. And index derivatives are definitely uh, those, uh, yeah. those kind of products that we need here in the region. I'd love to get some of your thoughts beyond the region as well, Vakas, because China is in focus. Are they going to get included in the Futsal Russell Global Bond Index? And what's the kind of feedback you've been getting from investors you're speaking to? Well, as you know, we added uh, China Air Shares into our Emerging Markets Index, and now we've been monitoring the situation on the bond side. You know, we did a broad consultation, as is, uh, as is part of our process, with all of the investors who use our bond indices, in particular the World Government Bond Index, which is widely followed, uh, widely followed especially in Asia. And certainly the uh, reaction from our uh, customers, our users of our benchmarks, was one that said, look, it's certainly something that's on the cards, but it's a question of time. Uh, they wanted to see some more liquidity build in the domestic market for Chinese government bonds before adding to the world government bond index. They wanted to see some market reforms. And I would say that certainly um, the, uh, the PBOC and other uh, authorities there in China have responded very well, and they're continuing to, to respond to the feedback we're providing them that we're channeling from the investors who use our indices. So 
It's a question of watching and waiting. Uh, we're certainly monitoring that situation very closely. Um, we run an annual process on the, uh, on the inclusion side for markets into our indices. So we'll continue to go through that process this year and, yeah. uh, and we'll see how that pans out. Well, Carl, so closing thoughts on European trading hours, because I was having another conversation earlier with a colleague and they pointed out, again, reminding me that European indexes have a much narrower window where you can actually go and, and exchange securities. So you're looking at about uh, five to six and a half hours compared to eight and a half hours in most of the other markets. Would you say there's an imperative now to change that get a little bit more realistic and boost liquidity and turnover? Well, I think it really is dependent on what the market participants want. You know, FTSE Russell that I run on the index side is part of the London Stock Exchange Group. The other divisions are capital markets and clearing. So the capital markets division, they're doing a consultation with all the market participants to see what their response is to this, uh, to this proposal. I think that the, uh, there are different camps there, you know, people who think that we need to have the overlap with, uh, with Asia as it runs down through the day, um, and there are others who think that that's maybe uh, something that, uh, that doesn't need to be such a wide window. So look, I think the process here is yeah. one where we need to consult with the, with the market, with the members, um, and okay. see what the response is, and that's something that's happening right yeah. now.